All right, all right, is this going again? Yes. <laughs> oh. Well, apparently, WWE United States Champion Donald Trump, ex president, uh, <laughs> might be arrested tomorrow, Tuesday. <laughs> Let the tragedy and comedy begin. Oh, oh, dear people, dear people, dear people. You know, back in the 90s, um, in professional wrestling, uh, the, de the then WWF was engaged in something with the then WCW, and um, it was called the Attitude Era. Okay, and I gotta tell you, if you look at all into professional wrestling, the Masonic ties that are within professional wrestling is staggering. The Satanism that is involved in professional wrestling is staggering. I mean, it truly is. But one of the angles in the 90s was Stone Cold Steve Austin and Vince McMahon, okay? And there was a specific skit where Stone Cold was arrested by going up against the man, um, Vince McMahon, and uh, he was taken off to jail. Of course, it was all storyline. And, uh, of course, Stone Cold Steve Austin with his... His character and fame became great because he was arrested, right? <laughs> people, people, you have to understand the world that is being given to you via the Jesuit-controlled media is a farce. It's entertainment, man. It's, it's entertainment. It's not reality. The reality that is being given to you via the internet, via the media, via the television, via the news is controlled, okay, by the Jesuit order. They are giving you a unreal reality, okay? And, you know, in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, please get your authorized version of the Scripture. Uh, and go with me in the authorized version of the scriptures to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. We're, we're just going to look at a few things here because this, <laughs> this is so preposterous. Oh, not the fact that they're going to arrest Donald Trump or if they do, whatever. That, no, no. This is drama. This is theater. And you people are eating it up. Okay? And all this theater and all this drama, they're built. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Okay? Do you like professional wrestling? No, Brad, that's for kids. Well, not really. Yeah, big kids in their 50s, right? Uh, but you are seeing a professional wrestling angle being portrayed right in front of your eyes. And the Jesuit order is laughing at all of y'all who take this slop seriously. Okay? Okay? But in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, follow me along, word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. We're not going to be looking at much because uh got quite a few things to uh, down the pipe here um, that we're going to be talking about this. This week, Lord willing, is going to be centered more so around things of government, but also some other things about certain positions a brother asked or whatnot, but nonetheless. Ecclesiastes 4, verses 13 on to the close. Better is a poor and wise child than an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished. Poor. Poor. Blessed are the poor. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven, right? Right. Uh, kingdom of heaven. You know, another dispensation. All right. But poor. 
poor. We are poor and needy as the church of the living God. Okay? Get your mind away from this. Okay? Get your mind away from mammon. Okay? But we are poor. We are dependent upon our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. We are dependent upon him, not self-sufficient. Okay? All right? We do things as guided by the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, yes. But we are not self-sufficient in and of ourselves. Our sufficiency is of the Lord, okay, who leads us and guides us, okay? All right, and wise child, okay, wise, fear of the Lord, child, as children, children desire, as babes, excuse me, desiring the sincere milk of the word. Isaiah chapter 28. Okay, what is it? Verses 13 on to verse 15, I believe that is. Um, Isaiah 28. But uh, we are dependent on the Lord. Okay. But an old and foolish king. Old and foolish. Fool says in his heart there is no God. And to behave foolishly is to behave as if you say in the, your heart, there is no God. King! Hmm. The older you get, the harder it is for you to come to the truth. Why? Because of the old-fashioned saying, set in your ways, right? Right? It isn't impossible. It's not impossible. Okay? It's possible that someone in their elder age can come to the Lord. It's possible. Is it probable? No. The longer you get, you go, the longer you are steeped in your sin and are justifying sin, the longer you go, the harder it comes for you to come back from that. And eventually you will reach a point of no return where you get so steeped into your sin that it's only going to take devastation to do anything with you. Okay? Thus, which is happening in the world right now, okay? But an old and foolish king, okay, we will do as we have always done. You know, no matter what you say, okay? It talks about this in the uh, Jeremiah chapter 44, I believe it is, where the children of Israel, as led by their women, okay? So we will not hearken unto thee, but we will do as we have always done, Okay? Let's, let's look at that, okay? Hold your place here and go to Jeremiah chapter 44. Jeremiah chapter 44, okay? Like I said, you know, I spent time <laughs> uh, in the book of Jeremiah, especially in these days. Jeremiah chapter um, uh, 44, verses 15 and 16. Uh, verses 15 on to verse 17. Then all the men which knew that their wives have burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, and a, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Pethros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us, we will, in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth, to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven, the Roman Catholic Mary, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals, and were well, and saw no evil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished. Verse 14 in Ecclesiastes 4. For out of prison he cometh to reign, whereas also he that is born in his kingdom becometh poor. Napoleon Bonaparte um, purposely lost the Battle of Waterloo to sacrifice his French countrymen who were patriots. Who were patriots. Yes, yes, yes. And of course, uh, the Jesuits once, uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, fulfilled his calling for his Jesuit masters. They sent him off and killed him. Okay? I truly believe 
that as the Jesuits did with Napoleon Bonaparte, they are going to do with, look at him, you can see him. I'm leaving that up, I'm leaving this up here so you can see this, okay? But I believe that the Jesuits are going to do with John, Donald J. Trump as they did with Napoleon Bonaparte. Because there are a lot of Americans out there who want to believe in this um, fantasy called America. Uh, they want to believe in it, and here is one of their greatest champions, or maybe that DeSantos guy, I don't know. But I, I truly believe that they are going to use Trump as they used Napoleon Bonaparte. Okay? Alright, that's what I believe that the Jesuits are going to do with Trump. And if Trump does get reelected, whereas also he that is born in his kingdom becometh poor, Okay? Poor. Poor. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. There's your communism for you. And actually, I got the, the notes right here for a video addressing that, uh, which may come today as well. Okay? Busy day today. But if, think about this, people, brethren, Americans, and you of other nations, consider this. Okay? Here's what will happen if Trump is arrested. What happens if Trump gets arrested? Well, before we go on this, let's continue here. Verse 15 and 16. I considered all the living which walk under the sun with the second child that shall stand up in his stead. There is no end of all the people, even of all that have been before them. They also that come after shall not rejoice in him. Surely this also is vanity and vexation of spirit. Rejoice in who? An old and foolish king who will no more be admonished, for out of prison he cometh to reign. Uh, this is Forbes. I'm not going to give you a link for this. I was going to use the um, uh, New York Times, but uh, in order to read anything online, you you know they'll give you a moment and then you got to pay for it. Okay. But uh, all you got to do is put in your Google search Trump arrest and you'll find a myriad of information. Propaganda, distraction, entertainment. Okay, this is a storyline. All right, this is unreality. We are seeing a scripted professional wrestling angle being lived out in front of us on national television and in the media, Jesuit control. This, this is theater. This is suspension of disbelief. Okay? This is theater. This is tragedy and comedy. This is theater, people. Okay? This is theater. Reality is the authorized version of the scriptures. Reality is when you turn this thing off and you don't know of whether or not you're going to be able to make it in a certain month or a certain day unless the Lord have mercy, okay, and provide, all right? That's reality. This isn't reality. Oh, sure, I, will Trump be arrested? I don't know. I don't know. But even if he is, think about it. But let, let's read a little of this, okay? Here's what will happen if Trump is arrested. Okay. Former President Donald Trump may be indicted as soon as this week in Manhattan on charges stemming... What, what is that, Fifth? Get that out of there. Um, former President Donald Trump may be indicted as soon as this week in Manhattan on charges stemming from his alleged hush money payments to adult film actress Stormy Daniels. An unprecedented event for a former president that would lead him being arraigned in court but not held in custody or being forced to end his presidential campaign. That's very interesting. And also the New York state and the Illinois state have a very similar thing in common uh, with the... Um, with the bail system or something like that. I, I don't know much on that, so I'm not going to speak on that. But then again, you know, what good is it going to be to the Jesuit order if you have Trump in jail? Okay? What, what you know, what's, what's going to be the point of that? Okay? But let's continue. Okay? All right. When will Trump be indicted? 
That's still unclear. The Manhattan grand jury hearing the case still has at least one more witness to hear from on Monday, this day today. And while they could vote on charges as soon as Monday, it could also come later depending on how things go. And you look online about this, he said, uh, uh, Trump himself said that he might be arrested uh, on Tuesday, March 21st. Okay. What will Trump be arrested for? It is expected that any charges against Trump will be for falsifying business records tied to the hush money payment to Daniels as he allegedly reimbursed ex-attorney Michael Cohen, Jew, for paying Daniels through the Trump Organization, labeling the charges as legal fees, which can be a felony in New York if they were falsified to cover up a crime and could carry a prison sentence of up to four years. <laughs> What happens after the grand jury votes? If the grand jury votes to indict Trump, the indictment will be filed under seal. So it won't be made public until Trump's arraignment in court unless the Manhattan District Attorney makes it available earlier. Well, Trump surrender. Don't know about that. What will happen if he does? Uh, could DeSantis... We're, we're not going to read the rest of this. I mean, if you want to... Okay. Oh, what happens once Trump Trump's taken into custody? Trump would likely be booked at Manhattan DA's office where he will have his fingerprints and mugshot taken and have his DNA and other information taken before he is formally arraigned and appears in court to plead guilty or not, not guilty. <laughs> okay. And verse, uh, adverse, excuse me. Will Trump be held in custody? Trump is almost certain to be immediately released once he's arraigned. Yes. Particularly under new bail rules in New York that allow people who are indicted on misdemeanor charges. This is what I was mentioning about the New York and Illinois tie with the bail thing. That's what I was mentioning. Okay. Okay. Uh, under new bail rules in New York that allow people who are indicted or on misdemeanor charges or nonviolent felonies to be released on their own recognizance without bail unless they are deemed to be a flight risk. And that, Illinois, has in uh, common with New York. That's what I was mentioning, okay? And besides, what good would it do the Jesuit order if they have Trump in jail? Okay? Okay? After all, after all, Trump is a 33rd degree Freemason. Okay? You gotta remember that. All right? So him being in jail is of no use. Of no use to the Jesuit order. Okay? But like I said, this is for, but I, I may or may not put this in the description box. I do not know. I do not know. But uh, you, you, you've got the gist. Okay? You've got the gist of this. All right? This is entertainment. This is theater, dear friend. This is theater. Okay? This is theater. That's all this is. Nothing more, nothing less. But theater. Okay? But I want you to think now, dear friend. What happens if indeed Trump does get arrested and indicted? He's not going to spend any time in jail. They're not going to put a 33rd degree Freemason ex-president in jail. It's not going to happen like that. It's not going to happen like that. The Jesuits, if anything, would probably take Trump out before that would happen. Okay? Before that would happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. But what would think about it? Think about all these wicked charismatic twits who said that uh, Trump was uh, the Osiris uh, prophecy about, you know, about how they twist that in Isaiah. Think about this. Think about this. Okay? Now think about this. Here comes Trump, the mighty Christian Republican. Okay? who said one of his big quotes was that he was going to end Catholic bias. 
Or, uh, and, uh, yeah, to end Catholic bias. People who are against Catholicism. Hello! That's me! <laughs> yeah, I'm against Catholicism. Absolutely. I am anti-Catholic. Okay? The evidence is on the, the channel here. You, or, or on any of the two channels that the Lord has given me. The evidence is there. Okay? I'm anti-Catholic. Okay? But Trump, one of his big things was that he was going to end Catholic bias. Okay? He's a big Christian, right? Remember that the uh, schmuck commander even supported him oh, and whatnot, okay? And all the charismatic prophets coming and giving prophecies of Trump, right? Because he's the great white knight, right? Think about this. Roll this over in your head a little bit. This, okay? You are being fed, okay? You are being fed a professional wrestling angle, okay? You are. What happens if Trump goes to jail? Okay. You got Communist News Network with the uh, uh, Liptard Demokamis. Okay. <laughs> and you got the, the vile Republicans. Can't do anything. Okay. <laughs> but you got Communist News Network that will go to vilify Trump. And then you have the Republicans, uh, Fox. It's. This is theater, people. But what happens, okay? What happens? The martyr complex. They will, they will put onto you the martyrdom syndrome of Trump. That he's a martyr. And also you can read about how he talked about uh, his supporters to protest, okay? Another way to just divide the nation between the Democrats and the Republicans, okay? All right? But think of what the martyr complex would be if Trump were to go to jail and get arrested, okay? Oh, you know, dear friend, that the comparisons of how Jesus was arrested, right? Brad, that's... I bet you, I bet you, if I were a betting man, if Donald Trump were arrested, that you are going to see these charismatic twits. Someone, somewhere, is going to make the comparison of Trump and Christ. You watch. You watch. How he's a martyr for the Christian right. Okay? And to ignite the right. Right? Right? I got to... Got to use that guy's phrase, unfortunately. But yeah, yeah, just kind of like what the uh, the Jesuits are doing with the pre-Vatican II Catholics, with um, with uh, Francis, you know, playing off that he's this imbecile going against everything, basically that even the Catechism says. Why to infuriate pre-Vatican II Catholics? Okay. And this kind of stunt, this propaganda stunt, to just ignite the right. More division within a nation that is already torn apart by stupidity. Stupidity. Absolute stupidity. Pronouns. What is a man? What is a woman? Okay. The sodomite agenda. Okay. Okay. The race card. Okay. In the description box, there will be this new order of barbarians thing, which is four hours long and um, talks about talks about this kind of thing about what the Jesuits. They don't openly name the Jesuits, but you know, you read the book by Leone about the Jesuit conspiracy to destroy America, and even Samuel Morse talked about this. The conspiracies to destroy America, they basically have. Okay, they just, just something has to, a bomb has to go off for America to finally fall flat. Okay? And to implode. All right? And that's what's coming. That is what is coming. The implosion of America. A foreign army doesn't need to fire a single shot at America. Even though it is quite possible with the Chinese troops that are in Canada and the sleeper cell units that are already in America and the ones that are in Canada, 
Okay, but the sleeper units that are in America at the behest of Sosa, the true power of the Vatican, okay, Satan is the true power, but Satan's man right now is Arturo Sosa, the black pope. At the behest of Sosa, he has to just make the word and those sleeper cells are going to rise up. But see, that doesn't have to happen. That doesn't have to happen. Because America is on such a plane right now that we would destroy ourselves without even these sleeper cells having to be activated, I think. I don't think they would have to. I don't think they would have to. But imagine the martyrdom complex that would accompany Trump as they did to Jesus, so they do to me. And then you've got all these wicked charismatics that would compare Trump to Christ. Out of prison he cometh to reign. If Trump gets arrested, okay, he is going to become even more popular. He is going to be even more ingratiated onto the American people who are fed up with what is going on. And he is going to be on the onset the champion of their cause, but as I believe, they, the Jesuits are going to use him as Napoleon Bonaparte because the French nationalists rallied around uh, Napoleon Bonaparte once again. And then at the infamous Battle of Waterloo, where he purposely lost that battle. Napoleon Bonaparte purposely lost the Battle of Waterloo. Okay, he purposely lost that. Trump will purposely lose. Okay? All right? And even if he isn't reelected, okay, he will sacrifice those people, those people who want to believe on him to make America great again as if it ever was. Okay? Hosea. Hosea chapter 8. Hosea chapter 8. Okay? Go to Hosea chapter 8. See, the world right now does not want the Jesus Christ of the authorized version of the scriptures. The world wants a Christ who doesn't judge, who loves unconditionally, who says love is love, is okay with the sodomite agenda, okay? Is okay with uh, women walking around looking like who is, okay? A Christ who is communistic. More on that in another video, okay? That's what the world wants. And once we, the Church of the Living God, be redeemed, that's what you're going to get in that man of sin, the son of perdition. But Hosea chapter 8. Set the trumpet to thy mouth. He shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord. Because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law. <laughs> this is for our instruction in righteousness, obviously. Israel shall cry unto me, My God, we know thee. Think about that. These Christians. We know who God is. We, Lord, we, Lord, Lord, have we not uh, done many works in your name? Have we not done this? Have we not done this? And the Lord's like, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye who work iniquity. Christianity. <laughs> okay. My God, we know thee. Israel hath cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. As a roaring lion. As a roaring lion. Hold your place here. And go to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. As you can kind of tell, this is... 
um, a little impromptu. Got something that is not impromptu <laughs> right here, but first thing second, okay? Uh, first Peter chapter 5, okay? First Peter chapter 5, verses 6 on verse 9. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. And he goeth and walketh to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. Okay? Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Go back to Hosea. Israel hath cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue, pursue him. Here, let, let me get a little bit of the sun is out. The sun is shining. Let me get a little light in here. There we go. There we go. Now there, the world, man. War, Christianity, because Christianity is of the world. Okay? Christianity, the world has cast off that thing which is good. And there is none good but God. And they want... The world and Christianity wants a Barabbas, who is a robber. More on that in another video. I don't want to give that one away. But Christianity and the world want a Barabbas. And a Barabbas is going to be given them. The system of communism, I, I, I don't want to get too ahead because this is going to be uh, the next video. But the system of communism is, in fact, a system made to set up a dictator. Okay? Okay? It is. It really is. Socialism is the means to set up a communist dictator like Hitler, like Franco, like Stalin. Okay? Like Kim Jong, whatever his name is. Okay? Communism never left Russia. Okay? It's still underneath there. Okay? It really is truly is. It truly is. But, okay, but the world has been made and Christianity has been made to believe that their only answer is to be given a one rule, one world ruler who is going to be that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? Stage is set. The storylines are being there just to pump up the eventual coming of that man of sin, the son of perdition. Which is going to be the answer to all of you who want a Barabbas rather than the Lord Jesus Christ. They have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Of their silver and their gold have they made them idols that they may be cut off. And when, in, when economies are collapsing, okay, money is made an idol. Okay? Money is made an idol. And as communism is, okay, which they say is all about equality, you no. Know, like uh, the one documentary that my wife and I saw, okay, about this, which I can't recommend because I don't recommend the channel. But um, <laughs> you look in history, the historic um, testimony of, of communism, it doesn't work. Besides, communism is a Jesuit creation. The Reducciones in Paraguay, okay? The reductiones, yeah. All right. Anyway, let's continue. Thy calf, O Samaria, has cast thee off. Mine anger is kindled against them. How long will it be ere they attain to innocency? But we're innocent. Lord, we, we love you, Lord. We, we, you know, we've done all this stuff for you. Jesus loves you, right? I never knew you. Depart from me, ye, work, ye workers of iniquity. <laughs> okay. 
The world, Christianity, the world has cast off that which is good. And they want a Barabbas. They're going to get it. And all the while saying they're innocent. For from Israel was it also. The workmen made it. Therefore it is not God. But the calf. But the calf of Samaria. Shall be broken in pieces. For they have sown the wind. And they shall reap the whirlwind. The whirlwind, how the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. It's like, who is this who darkeneth counsel with, uh, with words without knowledge? Okay? They have sown the wind. He who regards the wind shall not sow. They shall reap the whirlwind, the fury of the Lord. <laughs> it hath no stop. The bud shall yield no meal. If so be it yield, if so be it yield, the stranger shall swallow it up. Not for those for who it is intended. Hmm? Interesting, huh? Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. And of course, you got these heretics who come to this and say, they're trying to put in that uh, God is done with Israel. Go away. Just go away. Go away with your, replace, with your Catholic replacement theology. The Lord rebuke you. Uh, never mind. Let's continue. For they are gone up to Assyria, a wild ass alone by himself. Ephraim hath hired lovers. Yea, Though they have hired among the nations, now will I gather them. And they shall sorrow a little for the burden of the king of princes. King of princes? The prince of the power of the air? Eh? Yeah? Because Ephraim hath made many altars to sin. Altars shall be unto him to sin. And of course, you hold your place here and go to Isaiah 66, uh, just one verse, verse 4, <laughs> okay, uh, verse 3 and 4. He that killeth an ox as if he slew a man, he that sacrificeth a lamb, sacrificeth the lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck, he that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense, as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways. And their soul delighteth in their abominations. This is echoed in 2 Thessalonians. Okay, chapter 2. All right. I will, I also will choose their delusions. I will bring their fears upon them. The fear of the wicked will come upon them. Yeah. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes, and chose that in which I delighted not. The fear of the wicked shall, be, shall come upon him, or her. Okay? Verse 11 again in Hosea 8. Because if Ryan hath made many altars to sin... Altar shall be unto him to sin. I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. I can't, I can't understand the authorized version of the scriptures. Yes, you can. You can especially understand Romans chapter 1, 2, and 3. But see, you don't want to understand that. You want a Bible. That prophesies unto you smooth things. That prophesies deceits. It's not that you don't, you can't understand the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay. Oh, the deeper things, yes. The Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, will lead you, guide you into all truth. But a lost person, spirit, soul, body, reading Romans chapters 1, 2, and 3... Can figure it out. Yeah. 
That's what the point is of Romans 1, 2, and 3, especially verses 1 on to verse 18 in Romans chapter 3. Okay? Especially. It's your indictment. The Lord is pleading with you, showing you your guilt. And see, in you reading the authorized version, you can more than understand that. But see, you just don't want to. That's the thing. That's the thing, people. You don't want truth. You want a subjective truth because ye are your own little g-gods. What Satan said to Eve in the Garden of Eden is pretty much fulfilled. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And Satan is there to gladly give you what you want. And you're hooked. This is what you want. You want this. And because... <laughs> because Ephraim, verse 11 in Hosea 8, Because Ephraim hath made many altars to sin, altars shall be unto him to sin. Okay, and I mentioned it. We'll we'll go there. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Okay, Second Thessalonians chapter two. Okay. All right. I can't believe that people take the slop seriously. Okay. Second, uh, you know what you see on the news, the media. Okay. Second Thessalonians chapter two. <laughs> Oh, verses 9 on verse 12. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. We've been over this countless times before. you got to understand what we are seeing, what we are looking at. We are in the last days. The redemption of the purchased possession could happen at any time. Okay? It really could. Okay? It really could happen at any time. And this is what people want. This is what you want, lost people. This is what you want, you Christians. Well, I'm a Christian. I don't want that. Are you? Are you? Yeah. You're a Christian, huh? Like a Catholic? Yeah. Or are you of the Church of the Living God? Which one is it? And, and verse 12. I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. The authorized version doesn't speak in my language. Read Romans 1, 2, and 3. It sure does. Sure does. Yeah. Sure does. You just don't want to hear it. That's all it is. You just don't want to hear it. Or you want to hear something from the scriptures, but you go to another dispensation to get it. What am I, what am I talking about? Oh, the Sermon on the Mount. And try to apply that doctrinally for today. It's not for us doctrinally today. There's instruction in righteousness, yes. But doctrinally, no. It's not for us today. That's for the kingdom of heaven. That comes after the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. Verse 13. They sacrifice, they sacrifice flesh for the sacrifices of mine offerings. And eat it. But the Lord accepteth them not. Now will he remember their iniquity and visit their sins. They shall return to Egypt. Why? Because that's what you want. You want what Satan is offering you. You want the tripe on the television. You want, you want entertainment. Look at the Christians in the church buildings. This is what you people want. 
You're getting it. Okay? You're getting it. And what better entertainment than whether or not a 33rd degree Freemason, Jesuit trained Donald Trump going to be going to jail? What more entertainment can you want than that? That not even Vince McMahon can write a storyline as good as that. Not even Jim Cornette or Jim Ross, if you know anything about pro wrestling. Not even them guys could come up with a better storyline <laughs> than Trump going to jail. I mean, you gotta, you gotta just sit back and awe. And B was like, wow. 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 You know how... You know how John, in the book of Revelation, admired? Like, wow. He looked in admiration. Like, wow. Like, wow. Look at how successful an enemy you are to deceive all these people. Wow. Look at you. I, I'm I'm shocked that you are able to get as far as you have gotten because of the stupidity of the people. Stupidity, willful ignorance. Okay, these people aren't uh, aren't ignorant, brethren. They're not ignorant. They're willfully ignorant, which is stupidity. <coughs> And what does it say there in verse 13? They shall return to Egypt. They'll go back to their vomit. Because that's what they want. That's what they want. In verse 14. For Israel hath forgotten his maker. And buildeth temples. And Judah hath multiplied fenced cities, but I will send fire upon his cities, and it shall devour the palaces thereof. Our time is ending. This is their hour in the power of darkness, dear brethren. And like I said, Trump gets arrested. Do you do you realize the popularity that would happen? How more much more popular Trump would be? Here's a millionaire who gets shafted by the system, just like all of us, right? It's a brilliant storyline. But see, that's the thing, brethren. You got people. You got it. You have to look at this as it actually is. This isn't reality that you're being fed. Okay? It's a professional wrestling storyline. It's the suspension of disbelief. It's theater. It's tragedy and comedy. That's all this is. This isn't the real world, okay? The real world is when you turn this off and you walk outside your door and you see the effect of the entertainment that the Jesuit order is feeding the people and you have to deal with that daily effect and of the, um, the socialist communist system that is being set up in virtually... Most of the nations. And the monarch that is going to be set up for these people, for these people, will be that man of sin, the son of perdition. Because as we're going to address in the next video, you know, we eventually are going to be within a monarchy. You know that, right? Church of the Living God. My American countrymen, you know, we are eventually going to be living in a monarchy. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> yes, we are. We are going to be sitting under the rule 
of a king. We are. You, you realize that, right? You realize that, my American countrymen? You know? You realize that, right? Not today. Okay, we're not building kingdoms here. Today. Okay, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Who's building kingdoms here? Catholics. Because the coming kingdom of that man of sin is some perdition. That kingdom of anti-Christ. I don't know if the, you know, like I said, I don't know. I mean, this, uh, this whole thing about Trump, uh, I, I, you know, distraction, you know, like the sleight of hand with magicians, you know, they have you, and this is true, they have you focused on what the right hand is doing. What is the left hand doing while they have you focused on this? I've said that to you for quite a while, right? Okay. Nonetheless, though, you have to look at this, brethren, people, as it is. It's entertainment. It's not real. What's being fed to you on the Internet, the news, okay? You're being fed scripted, censored information, okay? Okay? You truly are. You truly are. So be aware of that. If anything, like I said, in the next couple of weeks or something with this whole Trump nonsense, ought to be very entertaining and interesting to see what the Jesuits will do. But then again, you got to remember, what is the end that justifies the means? Uh, what is the end that justifies the means? That's going to be it for this little video. Uh, I just, I, I wanted to address this. I had to address this. Because it's a pressing thing. Uh, like I said, got quite a few videos on the uh, on the uh, horizon here. Um, but uh, yeah, just just wanted to address this. It, it's laughable. It's laughable. But you got to remember, this is what you've chosen. You lost people. You people of the world. You Christians. This is what you have chosen. This is what you have chosen, okay? Because you have believed the lies of the devil. You are reaping what you've sown. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. We love you. Please, please keep us in your prayers. Oh, we need them. Please pray for one another. Love you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.